Yo, what's up? Before we jump on into this reaction, dude, go on over to twitch.tv slash johnsloppreacts and leave a follow if you want to catch all these live streams where we record these reactions. And go on over to patreon.com slash johnslop to submit your favorite songs for me to listen to. And you can help support the channel as well. Appreciate ya. Let's jump on into the video. We have Aloe Trope. Thank you so much, Patreon member Aloe Trope. Dude. Frank Zappa, Drowning Witch. Jumping into some Frank Zappa, dude. I'm very excited. We have a history of Frank Zappa on the channel. We've been doing Frank Zappa for over a year. And every single track he has brings me joy. Except for like a couple, dude. There's been a couple that have been just like, what, dude? What are you talking about in this song? Uh, honestly, I don't even remember what track that could be. Speculate. So we're going to jump on into Drowning Witch, dude. Uh, what album is this one off of? Ship Arriving Too Late to Save a Drowning Witch. Is that really what it's called? Hold on, let's do a little bit of research. Yep, this is the album's name, dude. Ship Arriving Too Late to Save a Drowning Witch. Uh, album by Frank Zappa, released in May 1982. Um... It was remastered in 1981. It features five tracks composed by Zappa and one song, Valley Girl, co-written by his daughter, Moon Zappa. Uh, and then a teen who provided the spoken monologue mocking Valley Girls, including phrases like gag me with a spoon. Dude, we gotta listen to Valley Girl, dude. Uh, the album's first half consists of studio recordings, while the second half consists of live recordings. Uh, side one was recorded at Zappa's Utility Muffin Research Kitchen Studio at his home in Los Angeles, while side two consisted of live performances from Zappa's Fall 1981 U.S. tour with studio overdubs. The live material was originally intended for a double album tentatively uh, titled either Chalk Pie or Crush All Boxes 2, which was scrapped after Zappa's record distributor requested a single album instead. Ooh, okay. So they were like, Zappa, no double album. We want one, dude. Give us one. Uh, the cover art for the album, for which it gets its name, shows the classic Droodle by Roger Price. The shapes in the cover art also suggest the letters Z-A and P sideways, as in Zappa. Uh, at the time of the album's production, Price was living nearby to Zappa, dude. Uh, okay, well, I think that's enough to get into this. Uh, that's very interesting, dude. Lots of people living in, lots of musicians in LA, dude. That's one thing I've noticed. So, 1982, ship arriving too late to save a drowning witch. Let's jump on into it, dudes. <laughs> Let me repeat that. Ship arriving too late to save a drowning witch. Let's jump on into it. Okay. There's a ship arriving too late. Say it's foul and witch. She was swimming along, trying to keep a date with the Virgin Marina. Told her she was really raised by the girls and man no more. She's on the ocean floor, and the water's all green down there. And it's not very clean down there. And the more this is, and the rest of it is all that she can see. America's few infested waterways. Hey, hey, she could get radiation all over her. <laughs> dude, dude, okay, I'm gonna pull up the lyrics real quick. I don't want to miss a single moment of this. Frank Zappa, Drowning Witch. Lyrics, dude, what? <laughs> and they're not even that long. Okay, so uh, we could potentially just. Dude, I'm just going to read what we just read. Uh, what we just heard. There's a ship arriving too late to save a drowning witch. She was swimming along trying to keep a date with a merchant marine who told her he was really rich. But it doesn't matter no more. She's on the ocean floor and the water's all green down there. And it's not very clean down there. Uh, okay, hey, dude. Let's just get back into the song with these lyrics on the other page over here. Oh. 
Okay, let's just take it back a notch to get back into this. Those are some of my favorite moments from a Frank Zappa song where he just talks along with a kind of weird progression. Like, I don't, I don't even know what that is called. It's just a Frank Zappa ism. I've really only heard him ever do anything. Uh, also, we listen to some Esperanza Spalding. She does some very similar stuff, dude. Uh, let's just get back into this track, dude. Holy crap. See her face, sardines in her eyebrows, lobsters up and down her forehead. All of them horribly large for radiation and smelling very bad and dangerous. <laughs> Maybe a submarine could save her. Dude, quick pause. This song does not stop moving. This is one of Frank Zappa's most chaotic pieces I've ever heard. Holy crap. It fits perfect for the season we're in. Halloween. Uh, this. Wow. Just wow. I, I'm, I'm ready for the next 10 minutes being just pure instrumental. The lyrics are already over. They didn't matter as much as I thought. <laughs> Let's just take it back a little bit. Ooh, I'm loving everything about this, dude. For those who are just joining us, I have a history with Frank Zappa. I'm loving all of this. Embrace the chaos. Let let the music guide you. Let's just go on this roller coaster together. Here we go. Oh, 
based. quick pause this doesn't even sound like a human is playing this guitar or any of this music it sounds like we're all either turning into like zombies or i've never heard a song sound so eerie yet with uh, it's just like i can also dance along to this this is very interesting very cool project here this is nice dude let's just get back into this another quick pause dude <laughs> that was one of the most intense experiences in music i've ever heard it literally felt like demons were trying to create music it was just so discordant and i don't even know if there was any syncopation going on there probably was right and polyrhythms uh but they made it feel like it was just chaos like no structure, but uh, on the underlying uh, layer, I felt like the bass and the drums were were keeping us were keeping us grounded just a little bit at least. But dude, what a wild experience! Uh, I'm not even sure who's on percussion here or bass. Uh, well, it actually, looks like Scott Thunes is on bass here on Drowning Witch, and we also have uh, Chad Wackerman on drums. So, shout out to you guys. Just also, Steve Vise credited for this album, but uh, not sure if he's in this track. So, just let me know if you know. 
Let's just jump back on into this one, dude. We're about halfway through. Drowning Witch. This is my favorite section of this whole experience, dude. I don't know, something about this uh, solo is just so guttural and dirty, dude. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I like the effects on this guitar solo and that bass rhythm as well. It's sick.
<laughs> Dude, that's where the track ends. What? Just cut me off like that, dude. You can't do cold turkey. I think I explained this in a previous reaction, dude. You can't just... It probably leads into the next track, and that's all right, dude. That's, that's admissible, right, dude? Oh, I just really want to know the story that was going on in Frank Zappa's mind. Dude, why... Why was there no more lyrics for the rest of this to explain the audio story? It's okay, dude. I love it. Regardless whether I get all the context to sometimes no context is is the best way to proceed, right? Like sometimes context just kind of bogs it down, stops us thinking about it. I'm going to be thinking about this song for the rest of my life. Like what is up with this song? Frank Zappa doesn't believe in choruses. He doesn't believe in repeating any of the patterns, dude, he's into the small experiences, sprinkling them. Dude, there was like 50 different sections in this entire song. This is like a suite, dude. This is something grand. Frank Zappa is something grand. Every single one of his projects, I've been looking at them as if they were songs. This is an experience. He had an idea creating this, dude. What was up with that ending? Something... He's very good at creating like some kind of profound uh, outro. It seemed kind of silly almost, like the speed of which it almost sounded like like harpsichord, right? Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just so funny. I don't know, Frank Zappa just has a great musical sense of humor. I love this song. I can't wait to check out more, dude. Just uh, reminiscent of all my favorite Frank Zappa tracks, dude. We have Inca Roads, uh, the the Porky Pig one. What, what was that one called? Uh, uh, the one where he's like, I don't know, dude. You 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 guys probably know which one I'm talking about. It's off of Redunzel, I believe. Uh, we can revisit that at some point. I would love to revisit some old Frank Zappa tracks. Dude, we've only listened to some once. So let me know what you thought of my reaction. Let me know what you thought of this song, dude. What's your favorite Frank Zappa track? Let me know down below. Make sure to leave a like. Hit that post notification bell so you don't miss anything, dude. You don't want to miss when we upload some more Frank Zappa, do you? That would be so sad. I would be crying if you missed out, dude. So moving on.